With USB Type-C practically taking over the electronics world, new devices such as USB-C portable monitors started appearing recently. Not too long ago, I got this Acer PM161Q portable monitor as a gift to go alongside with my laptop as an extended display. However, when setting it up, I had what seemed to be a compatibility issue. Little did I know, not all USB-C ports are the same. Apparently, the USB-C port on my laptop did not support Thunderbolt or video protocols over connections. I was able to confirm that this was the issue as I tested the monitor with my school-issued Chromebook which does have a Thunderbolt USB-C port, and it worked just fine. So to try and overcome the problem, I had bought some pricey conversion cables to convert the HDMI output on my laptop to USB-C and hoped that that was the solution. However, that still didn't do the trick, but I wasn't ready to give up just quite yet. So in this video, I will show you all how I was able to completely solve this issue to not only use for my laptop, but for other devices as well. Let's get into it. To see what I'm up against with the electrical work, I had to disassemble the entire monitor. To take off the shell casing, all I had to do was simply remove one screw behind the kickstand and separate the two sides of the case using a flat blade screwdriver. Be aware that disassembling a monitor could void its warranty. Once the case was removed, I then had to remove the metal frame housed behind the screen. Once again, all I had to do was separate the frame from the clips. With the frame now ready to come off, below it was the main PCB board. After removing it from the frame, I then looked over the board to get a general understanding of how it works. The big I see appears to be the display controller which connects to the 30 pin EDP connector on the left. The smaller I see near the USB-C socket appears to be the DisplayPort alt mode decoder for the USB-C input. To find out more, I attempted to look up the model numbers of both ICs in hope that I would find the data sheets associated with them. However, I came up empty handed which means that I will be unable to modify the board and will have to start from scratch without it. As an alternative to building my own, I decided to find a pre-modulated HDMI controller board as it will save time and will be less expensive. After looking up the part number of the monitor screen online, I was able to find a compatible controller board for just under $30. It consists of the RTD2556 display controller IC, which, according to its datasheet, has all of the functions needed to drive the screen of this monitor. This controller board also came with a handy button keyboard and an EDP cable. Before moving any further in this project, I wanted to test the module to confirm that it works with the monitor screen. I first connected the HDMI cable from my laptop and connected the power cable to a variable power supply unit set to 12 volts, which was recommended by the seller of the board. Once the power was turned on, the screen lit up immediately. After playing around with it, there were absolutely no issues. However, I had noticed something quite interesting. The power consumption of the screen and the controller board combined was only 12 volts and a little over 400 milliamps, making the total power consumption a little under 5 watts. Curious to see what lowering the voltage would do, I began to drop the voltage of the power supply unit. Until it reached 5 volts, there was no dimming on the screen. Once the voltage dropped below 5 volts though, the screen began to dim and eventually shut off. With this test now complete, it's possible that I could get away with using a USB-C connector to power the monitor with only 5 volts. With this in mind, I decided to remove both the power connector and the audio jack, since I won't need them and put a micro USB socket in their place. I had also soldered 20 gauge wires from the micro USB breakout board to the power pads on the PCB and glued the breakout board to the controller board. Regarding the button keyboard, I initially wanted to use the original button board. But the ribbon strip that is needed for it to work was too delicate to be soldered and so I had to use the larger button keyboard that came with the controller board. Since the cable connecting to the controller board was too long, I decided to cut it to the right size for my needs. Since the button board cable would have to stick outside of the monitor's shell due to the limited space, I had to cut a hole for the cable as well for the other connectors. After previewing how the connectors would look from the outside, everything looks good. Now that everything was near complete, I went ahead and screwed and glued the controller board into place. Once the glue had dried, I then placed the metal frame back over the screen and then connected the EDP cable from the controller board to the screen.
Following that, I then put the backside of the monitor shell back into place. Lastly, the button keyboard needed to be soldered to the cable. And that was it. I then tested the final product by connecting the HDMI cable from my computer to the monitor and then the micro USB cable. After pressing the power button, the monitor instantly came on and was as bright as my laptop screen. I tried to open the menu but the button didn't appear to work. But this isn't a big deal as I don't need to make any changes to the screen. Another factor that I found quite astonishing was that I could power the monitor by only using the USB connectors on my laptop. This extended its portability even further. With that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If this video was helpful, be sure to give it a like and also don't forget to subscribe to join the Goose Flock. I will catch you all later.